The liver is our body's major detoxification organ. It has many roles, including processing cholesterol, helping with protein production, managing hormones, and essentially removing all the toxins from our body and putting them into packages that are easy for excretion. A healthy liver has the ability to detoxify nutrients. It's making proper amounts of proteins. It's moving cholesterol and hormones in a proper way. And when your liver is healthy, you probably have good energy, good digestive health, and are not struggling with things like brain fog. Poor liver health may mean that your liver doesn't have the ability to detoxify and certain digestive functions are compromised. And when this is happening, you may be more inclined to struggle with brain fog or digestive dysfunction. Fatty liver disease essentially is a combination of liver and cardiovascular health where you may have an accumulation of storage fat that happens in your liver that can cause its own inflammatory kind of cascade, but in addition will compromise the liver's filtering capacity. So excess consumption of processed sugar, refined sugar, excess calories, and certainly alcohol as well can contribute to this. So the liver helps to make proteins. One protein in particular called albumin is very important in fluid balance, and it's also a transport mechanism for things that need to be moved throughout the body. Globulin is an additional protein that is very important specifically in the immune system. And so here we can look at levels of globulin when you're thinking about liver health to understand both the function of the liver, but also the function of the immune system. I think the most important things to look at are what's your ALT, what's your AST, what's your albumin level, and if you have digestive issues, you may want to think about what's your alkaline phosphatase level or your GGT, which may indicate issues with your bile ducts specifically. GGT stands for gamma glutamyl transferase, and it's essentially a marker that is very sensitive for liver inflammation and can help us understand if there's inflammation or dysfunction in the liver. It's a synthetic marker, so we understand is there oxidative stress in the liver that's happening. It really helps us hone into what's the health of the liver tissue specifically. So when you look at the two enzyme markers, the ALT, alanine aminotransferase, and the AST, the aspartate aminotransferase, there can be certain combinations of this that may move you in one direction or another. When you look at them together, if you see a higher AST compared to an ALT, you might think more about alcohol-related damage versus if you see a higher ALT to an AST, you might think more about fatty liver. So you could look at the two protein markers, so the, the albumin and the globulin, and when you see kind of low levels of albumin, you might think more about malnutrition, and when you see high levels of globulin, you might more think about an upregulated immune system. Bilirubin is a breakdown product of red blood cells. So when you see this elevated in the context of a liver panel, you may think about that, but more likely you're gonna think about some kind of obstruction in the biliary tree that might cause that bilirubin to not be moving through and therefore be elevated. I think some of the main things to improve your liver health include some key nutritional things, like decreasing your consumption of processed food, decreasing how much refined sugar you're consuming, making sure you're limiting, if not eliminating alcohol. These would be my key supports, but I also think getting fiber to push forward detoxification in the liver can be very helpful, and always sleep and stress reduction are very important. Alcohol is related to liver health because alcohol needs to be processed by the liver. And in the end, it is a toxin. And when we're consuming it at high levels, the liver has excess work to do to process it. And when done in excess, it has to be stored in some place in the liver, which then impacts how well the liver can filter. Fat builds up in the liver as a function of excess calories coming in. When these excess calories in the way of sugar or alcohol come in, the body is not utilizing them. We're not pulling them forward to actually turn them into energy. And so they get put in a storage form in the actual tissue of the liver. 
Fructose is very important when we're thinking about liver health. So fructose specifically is going to be stored like some of these other variables that get stored in the liver. And fructose independently will worsen cardiovascular health, will worsen metabolic health, and has a negative impact when we're talking about the health of your liver. So the liver has to turn items that are not water soluble into items that are water soluble and ready for excretion. So getting enough hydration really helps the liver do its most effective job. If I had to pick one food to support liver health, I would go for cruciferous vegetables without a doubt. The reason why is the liver kind of works in two modes. There's phase one detoxification and phase two. We typically all do the first phase reasonably well, but it's the second phase that we have a little trouble with. And cruciferous vegetables are very helpful to help this second phase to help us remove toxins from our body. So I would suggest Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, go wild on those. Cruciferous vegetables are very high in something called sulforaphane, which is the specific nutrient that the liver needs to help to remove toxins from the body. So alkaline phosphatase is a marker that is associated with the liver panel that both gives us an information on bone health. So it's involved in bone turnover. And it also gives us information about the bile duct. So when this marker is elevated, we're either thinking something related to the bone or something related to bile duct function. The bile duct is part of the liver and it specifically secretes bile down into the digestive tract to help the digestion of fats. So the liver tree basically is a set of organs that sit near the liver that include the bile duct and connect to the pancreas and they both kind of come together into the common bile duct that supports digestion. So first of all, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease refers to an excess of fat stored in the liver that is not related to alcohol. And unfortunately, this condition still has all the risks associated with it where you can eventually develop fibrosis and a non-functioning liver. When we think about what drives this condition, we think generally about excess calories, but the kind of calories matter. If you're eating a whole foods diet, you're not gonna struggle with this condition. But if there's excess processed food, empty calories with sugars that are highly refined, excess food, generally speaking, that's not wholesome and healthy, you may struggle with this condition. So fructose is a special kind of sugar that you may find in alcohol, specifically in beer, certainly in your sodas and your sugary drinks. And when you're consuming elevated levels of these types of products, you can also drive fatty liver disease. Excess fructose in the liver essentially is thought of as an excess storage molecule, and therefore it's turned into a fat for later time, later years of consumption, and therefore it gets stored as a fat in the body. So fructose is a type of sugar that can be found in fruits that your, you know, your apple, your pear, which are great sources of fructose, but they can also be found in sugary drinks, in your sodas, and in your alcoholic beverages, specifically in beer. So when we talk about fructose, we're not saying avoid it altogether. We are encouraging you to be strategic about what kind of fructose you consume. In your whole fruits, go for it. In your sugary drinks and sodas, be mindful.